The story of the short Sterling begins in the late 1930s. As tensions in Europe escalated, the British Air Ministry sought a new class of heavy bombers. The Sterling, designed by Short Brothers, was a response to specification B-1236. It was an ambitious project, aiming to create a bomber that could deliver heavy payloads over long distances. The Sterling was a striking aircraft. It featured a distinctive high-wing design, four powerful Bristol Hercules engines, and a robust undercarriage. It had a wingspan of 99 feet and could carry up to 14,000 pounds of bombs. However, its large size also meant it had a limited ceiling, making it more vulnerable to anti-aircraft fire. The Sterling's operational history is a tapestry of highs and lows. It officially entered RAF service in 1941, initially earning accolades for its payload capacity and operational range. The Sterling was a vital component in the early RAF bombing campaigns over Nazi-occupied Europe, including operations like the famous Thousand Bomber raids on Cologne, Essen, and Bremen. Its ability to carry large bomb loads over considerable distances was crucial in these early strategic bombing efforts. However, the Sterling soon encountered limitations. Its lower operational ceiling, compared to contemporaries like the Halifax and Lancaster, made it more susceptible to German flak and fighter interception. This vulnerability was starkly highlighted in missions such as the disastrous 1943 Nuremberg Raid, where Sterling suffered heavy losses. Despite these setbacks, the Sterling continued to play diverse roles. It was heavily involved in gardening operations, the RAF's term for laying naval mines in enemy waters. The Sterling's capacity to carry heavy mine loads was invaluable in disrupting German maritime activities. The Sterling also played a crucial role in supporting Allied airborne operations, notably during the Sicily invasion and the D-Day landings. It excelled in towing gliders and dropping paratroopers marking a significant contribution to the success of these operations. As the war progressed, the Sterling was increasingly relegated to secondary roles, including electronic warfare and supply drops for resistance forces in occupied Europe. This transition highlighted the adaptability of the Sterling design, even as newer bomber models overshadowed its performance in the heavy bombing role. Despite its challenges, the Sterling evolved. Variants included the Mark III with improved engines and the Mark IV, adapted for paratrooper deployment. The Sterling also served in non-combat roles like towing gliders and dropping supplies, proving its versatility beyond just bombing missions. The Sterling faced its share of challenges. It was outclassed by newer bombers like the Lancaster, and its operational ceiling was a persistent issue. By 1944, the Sterling was being phased out of frontline service marking the end of its era as a heavy bomber. While the short Sterling was overshadowed by its contemporaries, its contributions to the RAF's strategic bombing capabilities during World War II cannot be understated. It was a stepping stone in the evolution of heavy bombers and remains a significant, if underappreciated, part of British aviation history.